Did you know that anyone in a GTA Online lobby could have access to your IP address if they wanted, putting you at risk for malicious acts like DDoS attacks? That's why it's super important to protect your privacy while online with a VPN. ExpressVPN is the number one trusted name in VPNs and is the one I've been using for over a year now. With over 3,000 servers in 94 different countries, ExpressVPN will hide your real IP address, shielding you from any potential threats. It's compatible with phones, game consoles, PCs, you name it. And the best part, ExpressVPN is giving my viewers 3 months free on a 12 month subscription if you use my custom referral link that's in the description. Hey everyone and welcome back to another GTA Online video here on the channel. With the next gen consoles being available to the public now, I am very happy to bring you guys an in-depth performance review of Grand Theft Auto Online on the Xbox One compared to the brand new Xbox Series X. Today I have 11 performance comparisons to share with you guys designed to stress the different parts of the system, from loading screens to solo lobby performance to hectic police chases in full lobbies and even a runner distance test. This video aims to give you a clear picture of how the game runs on old versus new hardware. Now then. Let's boot up GTA 5. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of how long it takes to load into the story mode of Grand Theft Auto 5 on the internal hard drive of the Xbox One on the left, compared to the internal SSD of the Series X on the right. The timer will start once the legal screens end. The Series X loads the game in a very impressive speed of just under 4 seconds. And while I wait for the Xbox One to finish loading, I should say that these tests were performed on the base Xbox One, not the One S or the One X, and that this is the backwards compatible version of GTA V, not to be confused with the expanded and enhanced version that is being optimized and released on the new consoles later in 2021. But that doesn't mean you won't see improvements in certain areas like you see here, and I'll have more to say about that during the multiple frame rate tests later into the video. I think the difference here speaks for itself. The Series X loads in about a minute and a half faster than its predecessor. That is insane. However, that's not the only loading screen in GTA V. The online loading screens can be very long in this game. And the unfortunate part is that there's no accurate way to test public lobby loading times, because it is entirely dependent on how many players you're connecting to and the connection quality between those players. That being said, we can accurately test the time it takes to load into an invite-only session, which is what you're seeing now, because this eliminates any variables involving other players, it's just you and only you connecting to the game. And I'm happy to say that there is some improvement here, the Series X boasts a load time of about 20 seconds quicker than the base Xbox One. And knowing this information, we could probably make an assumption that on average, public lobby loading times to the same number of players with equal connection quality would be faster on the Series X. But again, it's impossible to test that on those exact parameters. But enough about loading screens, what do you say we go for a little drive around town? This is a simple drive test in a lobby all by myself with no player interference that could affect performance whatsoever, taking both the same route and the same vehicle. And as you can see, already the Xbox One is starting to struggle driving down Vinewood Boulevard with all the unique buildings and traffic in the area, dropping to as low as 23 frames per second. Meanwhile, over on the other side of the screen, performance stays locked at the intended 30 FPS. And as I mentioned earlier, don't expect the boost to 60 FPS on these new consoles, as this is the backwards compatible version with a hard cap at 30 frames per second. As we move away from the busy vinyl boulevard, the performance does seem to pick up on the Xbox One, but still very rarely getting to that intended 30 mark like on the Series X. Let's stress the system even more, shall we? And perform that exact same test drive in a public lobby of over 20 players, this time with a vehicle change to spice things up. The 
The Xbox One really struggles in this sequence, dropping as low as 15 frames per second just from driving at a slow speed in a public lobby. A borderline unplayable frame rate. So low that it will affect your inputs and overall responsiveness of the game will be noticeably worse. Even outside that busy street in a public lobby on the Xbox One, you're getting an average of around 20 FPS which is just not good by any means. The Series X however handles the scene with no issues at all, it stays locked to 30 FPS with an occasional dip to 29, which is not noticeable while playing. One of the more recent additions to GTA Online is the Diamond Casino, a very busy interior with lots of NPCs on screen, making it the perfect place for a framerate test. Since I used to play on the Xbox One, I already knew the performance was worse in the casino, but testing it in an invite-only lobby by myself, we can see now the exact results from just taking a casual walk around the premises. The Xbox One holds a steady 22 to 23 FPS, while the Series X shows it to be no problem at all, running the scene at a lock 30 frames per second. Continuing with the walking test, the next step was to go into a public lobby and take a brisk walk through downtown. And again, both of the clips you're seeing were recorded in a public lobby of over 20 players. And I think this is probably the best showcase of how just simply existing in a public lobby with 20 or so other people, the game struggles to run at the intended frame rate on the Xbox One. I'm not doing anything demanding in this scene at all, I'm literally just walking and getting 22 frames per second on average. No surprise though, the Series X runs flawlessly in this test. Next, we take our Alpha Z1 for a flight in a public lobby of over 20 players, flying as close to the same route as I could replicate on both consoles. And in the city area, the Xbox One struggles to maintain a smooth performance level. It seems to improve a little bit when you aren't next to the tall buildings, but it never really gets to a point of consistent smooth gameplay. One thing that I need to tell you guys is that you may notice some significant and unusual drops on both consoles to the low teens and possibly even lower. That's not the game dropping frames, that is just because of how the software that I'm using to measure the FPS works. Basically, if there isn't a lot moving on the screen, the software thinks that it's a still frame, which causes those drops. But back to the performance, the Series X measured a smooth and consistent 30 FPS throughout the city flights. When flying in Blaine County away from the city, the Xbox One does perform a few FPS better on average, but still rarely reaches that intended 30 FPS that the Series X has held throughout all of the tests thus far. And again, you're probably going to see some unusual drops to almost 0 FPS on both sides, but just know that that's the frame counting software and not the actual game performance in those specific scenarios. One of the most demanding tasks GT Online has to offer is a 5 star police chase. And for this scene, we took our tank down the very demanding Vinewood Boulevard with a 5 star wanted level in a public lobby of over 20 players. And it is in this test where you will see some of the lowest FPS values on the Xbox One as we really push it to its limits with the constant explosions, the AI on the screen, and coexisting in a populated lobby where it has to handle everything that entails on top of it. The base Xbox One drops to as low as 13 FPS under this load, which is almost unplayable. That's only 4 FPS from single digits. The Series X runs at almost double those frames in this exact same environment, and that's a massive performance boost, even if it is running the exact same game on both consoles. Any major FPS dip under 30 is going to be much more noticeable to the player than, say, an FPS dip from 75 to 60. So while it may not run at 60 FPS on the Series X, the experience is so much nicer.
But we're not done yet, because there's still another thing that the Xbox One struggled with, and that is texture streaming at fast speeds. In this scene, we're not only measuring frame rate, but we're measuring how the systems handle rendering of the game world while moving at a really fast speed. So we took one of the fastest straight line supercars in the game and put it down a straight line path down some hills to test this. Also in a public lobby with over 20 players. Not only does the Xbox One struggle in the FPS department during this test, but when we got towards the max speed, it showed major texture loss and pop-ins. So much that it caused the game to freeze for a split second to load in the missing textures. All of which are completely absent on the Series X. The Series X passes the test flawlessly with no issues with game performance or texture loss. And here is that exact same test performed on a bike with curse boost, and the texture loss is very similar on the Xbox One, even the entire Maze Bank Arena sees pop-in issues at fast speeds, again, which are not to be seen on the next generation console. This last test is more of a test to whether anything was flat out improved on the Series X. We're testing how far you can see a player through the sniper scope in an invite only lobby. On the Xbox One, you can see players on foot as far as 760 meters. And on the Series X, I got those exact same results. So render distance has not improved as it's simply running the same code as the base Xbox One version. Just with more horsepower to help it under loads. In the end, it really is the same exact game that we've been playing for the past 6 years since the Xbox One and PS4 versions released. However, those versions played on their intended consoles struggled to maintain the intended performance level of 30 FPS in the multiplayer mode, and these next-gen systems serve to fill that gap, so you will see a lot of improvement in performance while playing on a next-gen system. Come fall of 2021, there will be GTA V ports for both the Series X and the PS5, and one can only assume that the game's performance will be improved even more with 60 FPS, higher resolutions, and greater render distance. But until then, rest assured you will finally get a decent and consistent play experience just with backwards compatibility. And yes, even though I only have tested the Series X performance, it's safe to assume the PS5 running the PS4 version of the game will see similar improvements. And same thing goes for the Series S as well, it's basically just a little bit weaker of an Xbox Series X. But that is going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like, as well as subscribe to my channel for more guide and PvP related content. Huge thank you to my channel members for your support. If you would like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.